Hopefully by now you guys have seen or heard of the Project Veritas video uh, claiming illegal ballot harvesting going on in Minnesota. There is. There is illegal ballot harvesting going on in Minnesota. Make no mistake. Election fraud is occurring in this country. It has been the idea that politicians keep pushing for. Huh, well. There's no, of course there is. Of course there's election fraud going on. It's too important of a thing for there not to be people trying to cheat the system, okay? Let's be honest for just one second if we can. But if you haven't seen the video, I'm going to urge you to check it out. I'll link to it in this description. Uh, you should go do it. But what I want to tell you about is something a little bit different. The Democrat Party and specifically the Democrat Party in Minnesota, has been preparing for this. I don't know if they knew the video was coming. It doesn't really matter. They've been preparing for this for a while, including to the point of filing a lawsuit, specifically attacking the laws they're accused of breaking and getting a temporary injunction on the enforcement of the law. So yes, right now, just to be very clear, there is a court order preventing the enforcement of this section of the law that the Democrats are accused of breaking because the Democrats, probably knowing this is coming, filed a lawsuit preemptively uh, to get this to get this uh, addressed. OK, so we're going to talk a little bit about the lawsuit and I will show you. The order, I'm going to show you uh, the news story about the lawsuit from back in June. All of this stuff has been coming. Uh, it kind of flew, I think, under everybody's radar. And I'll we'll talk about why. It's because of how they word it. It's because of how they word it. And then in light of what's really going on as revealed by Project Veritas, it's all the more sinister and nefarious. And it's, it's mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing that in this country, people can still with a straight face insist that there is no election fraud going on. Or that it's some small amount or whatever. It is not. <laughs> it is not a small amount. It has impact. And it's going on everywhere and the parties are fighting over it in public but no one knows about it okay so here we go what project veritas is claiming about ilhan omar and illegal ballot harvesting we're just going to skim parts of this uh the first part of it really um but i encourage you again watch the video project veritas has claimed democratic representative ilhan omar is engaging in illegal ballot harvesting and a cash for ballot scheme in her district in minnesota, uh, minneapolis minnesota she is she is she is she is doing it she's doing it whether or not she needs to is a different question whether or not the ballot harvesting is causing the results is getting her the, enough votes if if she won by that i don't know but she is doing it Let's move on. The group, which has targeted mainly liberal groups with sting operations, posted a video late on Sunday showing what it claims is evidence of an illegal effort to harvest absentee ballots. The group's founder, James O'Keefe, alleged on Twitter that Omar's team may have bribed voters in Minnesota's 5th Congressional District, which she has represented since 2019. Uh, Liban Mohammed is shown in a Snapchat video commenting on the ballots. He's the brother of Minneapolis City Council mem member Jamal Osman. Newsweek originally reported that Mohammed was an Omar campaign worker. However, a spokesman for Omar clarified he does not work for the congresswoman. Just today, this is a quote from him. Just today, we got 300 for Jamal Osman. Mohammed says in the video, I have 300 ballots in my car right now. Numbers don't lie. You can see my car is full. All these here are absentee ballots. Look, all these are for Jamal Osman. Mohammed can be seen showing white envelopes on his car's dashboard in a video from July 1st. Later in the Project Veritas video, Mohammed says money is the king of the world and a campaign is driven by money. An anonymous person identified as a former Minneapolis political worker told Project Veritas that Omar's campaign, campaign deputy district director uh, Ali Isegeni was coordinating ballot harvesting from elderly people in Charles Horn Towers, a housing complex in the city before the Minnesota primary on August 8th. Eighth, same person claimed that women and young people were paid for their ballots during the primary. Cash for ballots accusation is unsubstantiated at this time. Ballot harvesting is not illegal in Minnesota. However, I mean, 
It kind of is. It kind of is. It's illegal under the statute. A district court in the state denied a Republican motion to stay a temporary injunction against the law that made it illegal for anyone to help more than three people vote. So, I mean, ballot harvesting isn't illegal so long as it's three or less. Uh, Jeremy Slevin, senior communications director for Omar, said the amount of truth to this story is equal to the amount of Donald Trump paid in taxes of 10 out of the last 15 years. Zero and amplifying a coordinated right wing campaign to delegitimize a free and fair election this fall undermines our democracy. <laughs> OK, OK, so I lied. We're not going to skim it. We're going to go through the whole article. This one, uh, we're going to get a little bit less of it. But here is the DCCC and DSCC Sue Minnesota over voter assistance law. This is January 24th, 2020. Uh, I believe I said June earlier. My apologies. Um, but this is from back in January. The ruling came down in July on the temporary injunctions. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. But here we go. Uh, pay attention to the language used by the Democrats in this, because that is really that is really what we're focused on and why people aren't paying attention to this and why this stuff gets sympathy. Contrast the language of this with the descriptions from the Project Veritas video, which sound like shakedowns or bribery. Here, it's assisting the elderly. All right, we'll talk about it. The campaign arms of the Democratic Party are suing uh, Minnesota over an election law that limits voter assistance. Democrat Congressional Campaign Committee and Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee on Thursday announced they are seeking to challenge the constitutionality of a Minnesota law that mandates that a person may help no more than three voters complete their in-person or absentee ballots. The committees contend that the law has the ability to affect non-English speakers and people with disabilities disproportionately. So uh, here we go. Obviously, they're talking about the Somali community. They're also talking about the Hmong community. Both have pretty prominent places in Minnesota and in Minneapolis specifically. Uh, and that, of course, is the subject of Ilhan Omar's uh, constituency. This is why this is important. But they're going to they're framing it here. <clears throat> they're framing it as assisting non-English speakers. The way in the interview that it's framed by the person who is allegedly an insider is stating that they're going to the elderly's homes and demanding their absentee ballots. They're completing them and turning them in for the elderly person with no say. Or in other cases, they're going to non-elderly person's homes they're paying for the ballots and they're having them fill them out and they won't leave until they're filled out the way they want. Those are the allegations in the video. Go check it out. Yes, it's happening. Of course it's happening. Go check it out for yourself though. Make up your own mind. You hear my opinion. It's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. And yes, uh, I've talked to a couple uh, Minnesota Congress people, this and other election electioneering and election fraud is going on and has been and has been for years and years and years. But every time it gets brought up, people say, no, this doesn't happen. It does happen. They're showing you. Uh, Project Veritas is showing you the video of it happening. Okay. Uh, the Democratic, yeah, yeah, they announced they're seeking to challenge the uh, constitutionality of the Minnesota law. There's no place in our society for laws that make it harder for older Americans, non-English speakers, and people with disabilities to cast their ballots. These laws don't make it harder. In fact, they do nothing of the sort to make it harder for them to cast their ballots. Them casting their ballots is unaffected by this law. Absolutely unaffected. Um... We should be working to increase access to the ballot, not restrict it. They have full access to ballots. There is no decrease in access to ballots by this law. This ballot prohibits one person from assisting more than three people, more than three others. And why? Oh, I don't know. Because the risk is that one person has now voted for four themselves and three others. If you take it away and you allow what's been going on as shown by Project Veritas, one person has now potentially voted on behalf of 300 people in one day, 
in just one day, he has cast 301 votes, allegedly, right? If the numbers, which don't lie, as he states in the video, are true. Why is this a concern? Because it's one person, one vote, right? Except it's not when you allow, when you allow absentee assistance, which isn't assistive. It's completing and turning it in on your own rather than allowing the absentee to complete it and turn it in. So that's the concern. That's why the bill's been in place since 1959, as we're about to see, okay? The law dates back to 1959 when voter assistance uh, limits first started appearing in some form under state statutes. According to the committees, this latest lawsuit is part of a larger eight-figure commitment to fighting voter suppression in battleground states. It's an astroturf. It's a funded campaign to buy votes, and they're now trying to make the unlawful activity lawful. That's what they're doing. It's right here. It was in January. I didn't see a big stink about it. Maybe there was one and I missed it. Entirely possible. Uh, it's the most recent challenge. Uh, there was a push earlier to amend the state law. They failed at amending the state law. Long story short, the Senate Republicans were like, actually, actually, we think this might be related to fraud. And so they didn't, uh, they didn't end up passing it in the Senate. They passed it in the House. But since that failed, they've now taken it to lawsuits. The defendant in the lawsuit was the Secretary of State, uh, Simon. And um, as you can see here, uh, this is the opinion of the Secretary of State, a Democrat in Minnesota. He says, if I have to be blunt about it, I think we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. Simon said at the hearing, the easy way would be to pass this bill and get this antiquated law off the books, or we can do it the hard way, which is not repeal the law, be sued, pretty sure we lose, incur a bunch of attorney fees, and have a court tell us to repeal the law. So you can see where the Secretary of State, who was already, already not interested, this is the guy who enforces the law on voter fraud. I cannot express this enough. The guy who enforces the law in Minnesota on voter fraud says he doesn't want to do it and thinks it's wrong and isn't going to do it. Great. All right. Here's some, let me top this off with the bad news, good news. Okay. There's bad news and there's good news going on in this case. All right. DSCC and DCCC uh, versus Steve Simon. As Secretary of State, this matter came before the undersigned judge on April 29th, 2020 on uh, three matters. One, the motion to dismiss of defendant Steve Simon. All right, that's denied. The motion for a temporary injunction of plaintiffs, DSCC and DCC, uh, and which is, which is granted. And the motion to intervene of proposed intervener defendants, the Republican Party of Minnesota and Republican National Committee, which is also granted. That's the good news, okay? The Republicans are being allowed to intervene in this case, which means Steve Simon will not be represented uh, and will not be the defendants. The Republicans are intervening and they will be the ones defending this law. And that's how it should be. Steve Simon has no interest in defending this law at all. He uh, is not expected to be able to do a competent and complete job of defending it. The Republicans have an interest in it because they're opposed to Democrat admitted voter fraud. Weird. All right. So it is hereby ordered. Secretary of State's motion to dismiss is denied. Like I said, Republican committee's motion to intervene is granted. This is good. Uh, motion to dismiss being denied. The, the motion to dismiss. The guy didn't want it dismissed anyway. Um, it was, you know, whatever. The Democratic Committee's motion for a temporary injunction is granted. And this is the relevant, uh, the relevant sections here. Secretary of State is temporarily enjoined, that means prevented, from enforcing the prohibition under Minnesota Statute 204C15, Subdivision 1, that limits a person from assisting more than three voters who require assistance to vote by reason of blindness, disability, or inability to read or write in marking their ballots. Okay, so they cannot enforce this potential voter fraud, something that since 1959, apparently in Minnesota, we have determined is voter fraud. They're prevented from enforcing it. And the secretary of state is temporarily enjoined from enforcing the prohibition under Minnesota statutes 203B08 subdivision one that limits the person from assisting more than three voters in returning or mailing an absentee ballot. So again, uh, here they are 
They're they're preventing the Secretary of State's office, which admittedly was not too keen on prosecuting the unlawful voter fraud. Uh, it's they're now prevented from from uh, doing that as well. So uh, that is that is what's been going on in this case. That is where that is where we're at. Uh, with the Project Veritas stuff right now, it's it's still illegal, but they're prevented from enforcing it. They're prevented during an election year, during the time of the election, prevented from enforcing election law. Isn't that isn't that magical? Isn't that magical? And they filed it back in January. They I think they knew that something like this was coming. Um, you had. And I want to point out, many people have been saying that voter fraud has not been happening in Minnesota, and it has. It has. If unless the person in the Project Veritas video is like a actor lying about everything, that under Minnesota law is election fraud. It is voter fraud, period. Now you can argue day and night about who solicited it and who's all ultimately responsible. The guy in the video is definitely responsible, definitely has a problem uh, with voter fraud. Whether or not that law will be upheld as constitutional is that's currently going to be a question. But that has been the law since for, you know, what, 60 years, 60 years that has been the law. And they have not said I want to point out that people claiming that voter fraud isn't occurring have not said that, well, it is occurring, but it's unconstitutional law that's going on. They flat out denied that this is happening now that it's been exposed. And again, I think they knew the exposure was coming. You had tons of Republicans uh, looking into this. I know a couple of them who have been talking about this for years now and talking about how voter fraud is occurring in various districts. Uh, this was coming to a head. The Democrats have taken the preemptive strike to make their unlawful activity lawful, and they may do it. We'll see. I think that the, the election law is perfectly suitable. I think it's ridiculous that we're allowing people to represent hundreds of people in filling out ballots. It's so ripe for abuse, and it is being abused at least according to the people who are doing the abuse. So there you go, guys. I hope you found this informational and uh, interesting. If you did, like, subscribe, share, put it out there. Get that Project Veritas video out there as well. Show people what's going on and then show them this video to talk about how the Democrat Party is... Because here's the reality, all right? Here's the summary of all of this. People who see the Project Veritas video are appalled by what's going on. Now, take that sensibility and show them that the Democrats have been openly trying to make the appalling behavior legal. Okay? Get that out there because that's the important stuff. The Democrats have been openly trying to make appalling behavior legal to rig elections. And that's the summary. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good one. As always, peace. Peace.